Let's begin with Doodly 101, your Doodly beginner walkthrough. This video tutorial was created with version 2.5.6, but the walkthrough will help you learn any Doodly version. Hi, I'm Wayne, the creator of this free video content. Nice to meet you. In just a bit, I'm going to show you content that's designed to show you 1 minute and 30 seconds of different video design techniques, try to make you laugh, all the while telling you how you can support this channel free of charge. If you're someone that feels the thousands of hours I've spent creating free content for you is not worth the 1 minute and 30 seconds of your time, simply use the chapters feature I've taken the time to create in this video and skip over it. Just move your mouse over the video timeline and click on the next chapter. For those of you that do appreciate the time I've taken, here it is, and thanks for watching. This free video tutorial took billions of light years to create. YouTube judges a channel by subscribers, likes, shares, and video hours watched. We only ask for all our hard work. Please use those buttons and let this video run until the end. Easily support this channel free of charge. Here are some methods. Click that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. This video is monetized. Let the video run all the way to the end. The ad revenue, as little as it is, helps support this channel. Join our Facebook group. You'll find a link in the description. You'll receive group status with me and other experienced doodlers and video designers ready to help. Share these videos with other people you know and even people you don't, whether it's in the official Doodly Facebook group or somewhere else. The more people that watch and comment, the more videos I'll create. Join Production Crate through the link in our description. They have a free account and some of the best video designing effects I've found on the internet, along with tutorials, so you know how to use them and can create effects like what you'll see throughout this video series. YouTubers! Reference back to our video in your video or video description. We would be appreciative of a link back to our channel or a plug in your video showing us our hard work paid off. Let us know about it so we can return the kindness. Contact us if you want to get a little more creative and learn how to pass traffic amongst channels. In Chapter 6, we'll talk about the timeline including the playhead, pan and zoom, video timeline, audio timelines, and the voiceover timeline. The playhead is in the timeline area. We use this to scrub back and forth around the timeline. You won't see anything happen unless you have the show preview window open. The show preview window plays back at 30 frames per second or 30 FPS. So this is what you want to use when previewing your videos. Now when we scrub back and forth, the show preview window shows us what is happening in the timeline. The pan and zoom area is really a pan, tilt, and zoom. Because you can give the appearance of going left and right, pan, or up and down, tilt. And provide the appearance of zoom in and zoom out using this feature. This is an extremely powerful feature in Doodly when mastered. There is a plus sign on the timeline just above the video timeline. This plus sign adds a pan and zoom section to the timeline. Most of the zoom in and out effects that you see in Doodly creations are used with the pan and zoom function. There are other methods of creating a zoom effect or movement in Doodly without using the pan and zoom feature. Everything is manual in the pan and zoom, and undo and redo do not work in this area, so be careful when working with this because if you start to move and finish accidentally, you will have to move it back and line it up manually. There's no grid alignment in the pan and zoom. If you try to use undo or redo, you will undo or redo in the timeline and not in the pan and zoom window. Without unlocking the start, we can resize the ending portion of the pan and zoom section and move it around within the boxed area. We have a show preview button that allows us to see what is happening without going out of this window. 
This now comes with a play button that has a basic play timer. We also have start and end buttons now in the upper right hand corner. We can use this view to line up the bounding boxes by switching back and forth between start and end. This is the best method with this version I've discovered of working with pan and zoom when you want to line items up. Clicking apply will confirm the changes we've made to our doodle using the pan and zoom. Now we can scrub back and forth on the timeline and see what we've done. Or we can press play and just let it run. Be advised that too many pan and zoom sections on the timeline will cause doodly to lag when the playhead runs past those sections and potentially crash if you don't have enough memory in your computer. If we want to resize the pan and zoom, we can click and drag the sectioned area either direction to provide a greater or shorter duration to the pan and zoom. Let's watch this for a second. We can see the zooming functionality is taking longer because I increased the length of the pan and zoom section across the timeline. We can hide the objects area or doodly libraries and the actions or layers section to increase the size of the show preview window. This helps tremendously if you're developing on a smaller 15.4 inch laptop screen and not a 32 inch desktop monitor. Let's bring those back and talk about the different timelines below. We have the voiceover timeline. This allows you to record a voiceover directly in Doodly. This is not advised because inevitably there will be background noise, lip smacks, heavy sighs, or breathing, and many other items that a microphone picks up. Doodly doesn't have any ability to remove these items. You can use Audacity or Adobe Audition to edit the video before importing it into Doodly. If you do choose to record the voiceover within Doodly, you do have the advantage of seeing a 10 frames per second or 10 FPS preview of your video while recording. 10 FPS will make your video appear laggy and slow. Whether the voiceover is recorded inside or outside of Doodly, you will get a basic audio timeline to show you what you can see for your higher and lower points and to tell you where emphasis on words may be to use those to sync up your video to your audio. When your mouse hovers over the audio timeline, you will see the name of the audio. There is an X on the right hand side that will allow for deleting the audio from the timeline. Clicking the X will bring up a warning of are you sure you want to remove this audio from the music timeline with an OK or cancel button? We'll click OK. Let's talk a bit about the rainbow add-on and the video timeline. Let's hide this preview window so we can see a bit more. As you saw before, we turned off the rainbow add-on. This removes all colors from the doodly provided assets. When you drag an asset onto the canvas without the rainbow add-on and then enable the add-on from the library, the color is not automatically added to the assets on the canvas. We can create different effects with the rainbow add-on enabled and disabled. Notice the more assets we add onto the canvas, the longer the video timeline extends for the scene for which we are currently selected. This is because each asset has a default of three seconds of duration time for appearing on the canvas. This means it'll take three seconds for drawing or revealing or fading the asset into the canvas. Right clicking on the video timeline gives a context menu with different options. Sometimes that might be command click or alt click on a Mac. Clicking insert will allow us to create another scene directly before the scene for which we are currently selected. The second option on the menu is preview. This is not the same as the show preview button. This is the same as the preview button next to the export option and it displays the doodle at 10 frames per second, which makes the doodle look very laggy. This is not a realistic view of the final export unless you chose 10 frames a second. As you can see, one of the main differences between the two preview options, other than the FPS, is the preview window for the button instead of the embedded viewer of the show preview option. 
Closing out of the show preview window, let's continue to the next option, duplicate. Duplicating the scene allows us to make an exact duplicate of the scene directly after the scene we are duplicating. However, duplicating many scenes may have unexpected issues. There are a couple of bugs within Doodly when working with large projects. After closing out of the project and then reopening the project, you may find unexpected random scenes have been duplicated and triplicated as well as moved unexpected places like scene 1 or scene 4 instead, which messes up your entire project and requires manual deletion of the additional scenes and moving or copying and pasting of any of the move scenes. Keeping in mind that audio and video do not sync together, so that may misalign your audio as well. Copy does exactly what you think it does. It copies the entire scene to the clipboard. You won't see anything happen, but it did copy. After you figure out where you want to paste your copied scene, when you right click, the paste option is now available and can be chosen from the context menu to essentially duplicate the scene where you want it rather than directly after the original scene. You can even copy and paste between projects as well. The last option is the delete option which will remove a scene from the video timeline. When choosing to delete, a warning message will appear asking, are you sure you want to delete this scene with a cancel and OK button. Deleting a scene is not undoable. Once a scene is gone, it will need to be recreated if desired to have it again. It's a little difficult to tell when one scene starts and the next one begins. Let's change the background color so we can see the distinction between the two scenes. We'll set it to blue. There, that's better. Moving scenes around is very simple. Left click and hold your mouse button down on top of the scene and drag the scene where you would like it. This process gets a little more difficult when you have a lot of different scenes. When you start getting into 20 to 50 scenes, Doodly becomes extremely laggy. The audio timelines in Doodly still have a lot of bugs in them as of version 2.6.4 which is the current version as of writing this script, but not the version shown in this video. When including more than 124 audio clips on the same audio timeline, Doodly will crash during the rendering process. It's better to stagger the audio on multiple audio timelines. Also, there is a big issue when combining videos and audio together. Our research shows that Doodly takes twice as long, if not longer, to render when attempting to render both video and audio together than separately. Therefore, we recommend rendering the video and audio in separate doodles and combining these in a video editing software outside of Doodly. Doodly supports multiple audio timelines. We will show the basics of working with audio, but we have a video dedicated to working with audio in Doodly. Watch that video as it provides detailed information on this subject. Just like adding an audio track, removal of one can happen as well. When removing a track, a warning message appears asking, are you sure you want to remove this audio track? With a cancel or OK button. Clicking OK will then remove the audio track from the timeline. This action is not undoable. Let's talk voiceovers. You can record a voiceover directly in Doodly or create your own MP3 file and import it into Doodly. I highly suggest using Audacity or some other program to create your voiceover as this will provide you the opportunity to edit the voiceover before final production. After importing the voiceover into Doodly using the plus sign, it will show up in your files. Drag it onto the voiceover timeline and you have a voiceover. Hovering over the voiceover reveals an X to allow us to delete the audio track from the timeline. One such program that you've heard me mention many times already is called Audacity. Audacity is a free program that will help clean up voiceovers and other audio files that may be desired to be imported into Doodly. Oh, here is something to look out for when using Doodly. Notice I have my writing accidentally set for right to left. 
uncheck the box to make it go from left to right, and choose word wrap if you want the text to not stay on a single line. Let's type that out and show you what working with multiple lines of text inside Doodly looks like and the tools that become available. We can use things like word wrap and left, center, and right alignment. For the more technical doodlers, although you can use keyboard shortcuts for bold and italics on text, they do absolutely nothing. You will see the change in the text box, but you will not see the change on the canvas other than the error of the text getting cut off by the bounding box. Changing the text back to a non-formatted style will stop the text from getting cut off by the bounding box on the canvas. Bringing a close to chapter 6, we can see that we can move around the text on the screen and choose the different types of alignment. Choosing the gear icon will bring up other settings that can be adjusted to work with text and other assets on the canvas. Check out what unchecking word wrap does to the text. We can see the entire thing is on one line, so let's bring that back for the time being. After this chapter, you should feel more comfortable working with audio and video inside Doodly. Hey, that's it for this video, but not for the rest of the information on this channel. Here are some more videos to help you keep learning. Click that subscribe button and tap that notification bell for more doodly tips and tricks. Let's make a deal. You keep watching the videos and I'll keep creating the content.